Welcome to this WiseOwl tutorial on using Key Performance Indicators or KPIs within Power Pivot. Here's what you'll learn during the tutorial. We'll start by having a look at what KPIs are and how you can use them in Power Pivot. Then we'll have a quick look at the data model required for the example used in this tutorial before going on to create the necessary calculated fields to make our KPIs work. Then we'll look at creating the relative KPIs themselves before formatting the resulting pivot table and during this session we'll have a look at the bug which means you can only use one set of icons. And finally we'll have a look at the other type of key performance indicators, absolute KPIs. So let's get started. Let's begin this tutorial with where we're trying to get to, the end point if you like, which is to compare the total sales for any period with the total sales for the same period in the previous year and display a green icon if the first is 5% or more higher than the second, a yellow icon if it's at least as high as the second and a red icon if we fail to meet the previous period's sales. The final result could look something like this and for whether you're looking by year, quarter or month you'll see that icons are displaying correctly for every single pivot table cell and that would be true even if I change the filter to something different. All very clever. If you've been following the tutorials in this series to date you're probably getting a bit sick of creating data models so I thought we'd do a simple version of this pivot table. We'll just have the total sales by year, quarter and month. The tables you'll need in your data model are just the calendar table, the POS table and the transaction table and I've hidden the POS table so it doesn't clutter things up. So that's the data model we'll need for this example. The next thing I need to do is to create the fields which I'm using as part of my KPI. You could argue I don't need to do this because I've already got the quantity there so I can use that as what I'm measuring. But if I try creating a KPI, which you can do choosing the KPIs tab on the ribbon, you'll see it tells me I don't have any calculated fields. And here's the thing, you can't use implicit calculated fields like this as a basis for a KPI. So what I'm going to have to do is create two calculated fields. One of them will hold the total sales and one will hold the total sales for the same period in the previous year. So to do that, and this is really just revision, I can create my first KPI. I'll call it total sales. And what it will do is just sum the quantity field. And out of sheer habit, I'll format it. And I can then choose OK. And that's looking good. And now I can definitely get rid of my implicit calculated field. It's not going to be any use anyway. For my second calculated field, I'll call it previous year. And what it will do is calculate the total sales, so I'll sum the quantity, using the same period last year's dates. So if you follow through the chapters on creating calendars and using date functions, this should all be familiar to you. And once more, I'll just format that purely out of habit, check my formula is OK, and choose OK. So they're my two calculated fields, but what I'm actually going to do now is deselect both of them because they will be displayed as part of my KPI. What we can do now is to create our KPI, Key Performance Indicator, and to do that I can use the KPIs button on the Power Pivot tab of the ribbon and choose to create my new KPI. The thing I want to measure is the total sales, and the thing I want to measure it against is the previous year's total sales. I can do this in one of four ways. Try to make it as high as I possibly can relative to the previous year's sales, as low as I possibly can, unlikely I would have thought, as close to the previous year's sales as I can get, or as far away from them as I can get. Now, in most cases, you'll want to make something as high as possible. I can change the thresholds in one of two ways. The first way is I can type in a value into one of these boxes and press return. So at 105% of the previous year's sales, a green icon will kick in. The other way I can do it is to click and drag on the black icon. It's not always terribly easy to position this exactly, but I've managed to do it on the first attempt here. So there's my thresholds. What I can now do is select an icon style. They all look very beautiful, don't they? But as we'll see shortly, it doesn't seem to matter which you choose, you'll always get the one on the left. And I want to talk more about this later on in this tutorial. For the moment, we'll just choose OK. And Power Pivot will do two stupid things. 
You can see the silly things it's done by looking at the KPI as it's been added to your transactions table. And you can see a KPI consists of three parts or three components. The thing you're measuring, the thing you're measuring it against to what you're trying to attain, and the status of how you're doing. Firstly, it's highly likely you would want to display the value and the goal. And the second thing is, for the status, by default it will display it at least in this version of Excel as a number. In the previous version it got it right the first time. Is this a bug or a feature? You decide. If I untick that box and then tick it again, the status appears correctly as an icon. But why it appears wrongly the first time, I have no idea. And what you now need to do, perhaps, is to format your pivot table to make it look more attractive. Most of the ideas for formatting a pivot table are probably pretty obvious. The first thing you would always, 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 always want to do is to send to justify this column. It always makes me wonder why Power Pivot doesn't do this by default. You could rename your column headers. So I'm going to call this this year, and I'll call the next one previous year. Makes it look a bit better. Personally, I would go to the Analyze tab of the ribbon, and I would get rid of this row labels appearing by unticking field headers. That looks a bit better. I would be tempted to make my three columns the same width by clicking and dragging on the top of them like that. And I'd probably be tempted to right align these two columns. The other thing you could do is try to get different icons appearing, but I think you'll struggle. In Google, I've got a little search set up here, which I'm going to run. Power Pivot KPI icons bug, and I was pleased to see when I ran it, the first article is on Stack Overflow, is the one I actually submitted back in February. That's my picture there, playing football, um, asking what's going on here. And I haven't received any replies, which is very unusual for Stack Overflow, and to me suggests there is no adequate answer. It may be on your machine this all works perfectly. If that's the case, you're probably not using a 64-bit laptop running Windows 7. Maybe it's specific to the operating system. But whatever it is, it's irritating, because these icons appear perfectly well in conditional formatting as different icons. It just seems to be in this version of Power Pivot. And if I were to do this in Excel 2010, it would work perfectly there too. For the final part of this tutorial, I'll show how to create an absolute KPI. What I'll do firstly is to stop displaying anything to do with the total sales KPI I've just created. And what we're going to do instead is to create an absolute KPI that the ratio of this year's sales to the previous year's sales should be at least 100%. So to create a KPI like this, I need to create a new calculated field first to measure. I'm going to call it ratio. And what it will do is take the sales for this year, total sales, and divide that by the previous year's sales. I'll display it as a percentage, as seems appropriate. And when I choose OK, it will display hash num exclamation mark in 2013. I'm actually getting a divide by zero error because there's no previous year's sales defined for 2013. One solution to that would be to use an if error function to display blank where I had an error. A tackier solution, which I'm going to use on this occasion, is to actually hide 2013 altogether. To do that, I'll go to the Analyze tab and stick my field headers back in so I can easily filter the information. And I'll click on this little icon and choose to display just the information for 2014. And there you are. That's how to solve errors. Just don't display them. So now I've got my ratio, I want to set whether it's 100% or not. And to do that, I can create my KPI. I'm measuring my ratio, that's what I'm assessing, but it's an absolute value on this occasion. And it's not 100% or 100 I'm trying to get to, it's actually the number one, equivalent to 100%. My thresholds are put in as the same as before. So I'll put the first threshold, in fact, let's start with the second threshold, as put as 1.05. And for the first threshold, I'll type that in as 1, corresponding to 100%. Not much point in changing my icon, so I won't. If we now choose OK, you can see we get the same thing as before, that the status isn't showing up correctly. So what I'll do is choose to display my goal, what I'm trying to attain, unselect my status, and then redisplay it again. And with a bit of formatting, I've got my absolute KPI looking reasonably sensible. It would make a lot of sense to display these goals as percentage symbols. 
So that's an absolute KPI. If you like what you've seen and heard so far, why not head over to the WiseR website where you can find loads more free resources, including these videos, some written blogs and tutorials, and even some exercises that you can download to practice your skills. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.